Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic for you today. Let's do it. Who is the most scary serial killer in your opinion? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Oscar Jolowanger. He crosses the line from average war criminal to serial killer. He was a mass murderer, sadist, aurist, and pedophile who got to live out all his sick fantasies while fighting for the Nazis in World War II. In February 1942, the unit was assigned to anti-gang operations, Bande Beckenfunk, in Belarus. In Bloodlands, Europe between Hitler and Stalin, Timothy Snyder wrote that Durlwanger's preferred method was to herd the local population inside a barn, set the barn on fire, and then shoot with machine guns anyone who tried to escape. Rounded up civilians would be also routinely used as human shields and marched over minefields. In Masters of Death, Richard Rhodes wrote that Durlewanger and his forces arred and tortured young women and slaughtered Jews Einsatzgruppen style in Bielorussia beginning in 1942. Snyder cautiously estimated that the Sonderkommando by the regiment sized killed at least 30,000 Belarusian civilians. Himmler was well aware of Durlewanger's reputation and record, but nonetheless gave him the German cross in gold on 5 December 1943 for his unit's actions, such as during Operation Cottbus, May to June 1943, during which Durlewanger reportedly killed more than 14,000 alleged partisans. In the summer of 1944, Operation Bagration, Durlewanger's unit suffered heavy losses while fighting against the Red Army. It was then hastily rebuilt and reformed into a Sturm Brigade, assault brigade, and used in the suppression of the Warsaw Uprising. Historian Martin Windrow wrote that in the summer of 1944, Durlewanger led his butchers, arrests, and looters into action against the Warsaw Uprising and quickly committed unspeakable crimes. In Warsaw, Durlewanger participated in the Wola Massacre, together with police units rounding up and shooting some 40,000 civilians, most of them in just two days. In the same Wolda district, Durlewanger burned three hospitals with patients inside, while the nurses were whipped, gangard, and finally hanged naked, together with the doctors, to the accompaniment of the popular song in München Stadt ein Hofbrauhs. Later, they drank, ard, and murdered their way through Old Town, slaughtering civilians and fighters alike with distinction of age or sex. In the Old Town, where about 30,000 civilians were killed, several thousand wounded in field hospitals overrun by the Germans were shot and set on fire with flamethrowers. SS Obergrufenführer Erich von der Bach Zabwilski, overall commander of the forces pacifying Warsaw, and Durlewanger's former superior officer in Belarus, described Durlewanger as having a typical mercenary nature. Dagmar Overby. She's a Danish serial killer and absolutely stone cold. At the time, you could adopt children from the newspaper for varied reasons. Could not afford the child, it was out of wedlock, these things. And she would search these and take the payment, and within hours, murder the children in the most casual way ever. Dump them in the river because it was on your way, or throw them in the furnace. One instance, a lady came back after her child because she had a change of mind, but Dagmar already murdered that toddler, so she found a lookalike, adopted that child, and gave it back. How she got caught was similar. A mum wanted her child back, and she gave some stupid excuse the police were forced to get involved. They found numerous dead babies in her apartment, but Dagmar was keen on confessing. She got the death penalty, and before this case, for about a 100 years, the death penalty was just pro forma. The king would pardon you, but in this case, people really wanted her head. It was overturned to life in prison, despite mob justice just waiting. But it also created entire laws to protect single moms and bastard children. To me, the scary part is that it took so deranged actions before protections of some of the society's weakest were in place. I have to say, I appreciated this file because there were a lot of names I've never read before and I've been reading for this channel for a couple of years, so thank you for sharing. I mean, horrible that the crimes are, but always good to learn about the past. Amelia Dyer, the Ogress of Reading. 
In Britain, who was a baby farmer and would do the same, take in unwanted babies that were born out of wedlock and kill them, usually strangulation with dressmaker's tape and dump the bodies in rivers. She had been baby farming for years and had been caught previously for neglect. She would allow babies to die of malnourishment and keep their cries quiet with laudlum. She served a stint in a penal workhouse, and after that, every time the authorities got close, she would either move house or feign madness and spend some time in an asylum. She was eventually caught when the police became involved after the mother of one of the children came back for her daughter, but the baby had already been killed. Dyer attempted to pass off another child of a similar age, but the substitute child was missing a birthmark the mother remembered on her own baby. Catherine Knight. She is not technically a serial killer, but she is truly terrifying. She was the first Australian woman to be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Even her mother knew she was psychotic and warned her husband, John Price, that she could get dangerously violent. She tried to strangle her husband on their wedding night, conked him over the head with a frying pan, which broke his skull, and put her baby on the train tracks. Later on, she killed John Price by stabbing him at least 37 times, both in front and back of his body. As if that's not enough, she skinned him and hung the skin from a meat hook, then decapitated him, cooked his body, and fed it to the kids. Whoa. I would say E-A-R-O-N-S because he would commit a crime, robberies, then R's, then murders over the years, watch the newspapers and listen to his cop buddies investigate the case, and then exchange his M.O. and or appearance in order to deliberately throw them off the trail. They said he was fat, he lost weight. He said he had long hair, he cut it. They said he only attacked people who lived in single-story homes. He immediately went for a couple sleeping on the second floor. He would steal a pair of earrings from one home and leave a single earring in the next home he broke into, in the rain gutter, where it would be found months or years later, or sometimes not at all. Overall, his crimes, it really seemed like he was just doing it for the joy of hurting people. There was no cool-down period after each attack. Sometimes he'd assault two or three people in one night, just because he felt like it. He just wanted to hurt people. He wanted to see how much he could hurt people and how far he could take it. They did eventually catch him, when his third cousin, twice removed or whatever, uploaded her DNA profile to a John Doe website and got a match to EIRONS's DNA from the 70s. Ukrainian serial killer Andrei Chikatilo, dubbed the Butcher of Rostov, he essayed, murdered, and mutilated at least 52 women and children between 1978 and 1990. 52 people in a pretty short amount of time. That's just crazy. Imagine what it was like if you were like a homicidal killer before like modern technology. You probably killed hundreds of people, right? Crazy. Israel Keys. He had just shy of an 11 year that we know crime spree. He was intelligent, completely unpredictable, and had high knowledge of wilderness survival skills. He traveled for most of his killings, making him wildly dangerous. His crimes ranged from robbery to R, and his planted murder kits are terrifying to think about. Lewis Hutchinson, insane doctor who had his own castle in a remote estate in Jamaica, used to invite people over, then snipe them, then drag them into a sinkhole so animals could eat them. Hanged in Spanish Town, 1773, he is one of the first known serial killers on record. Zodiac killer for me. He used ciphers, but I don't think he was a genius. He got lucky because the different police forces kept failing to share vital information. And I think the wanting trophies for the afterlife was an act. He wasn't mad, he just wanted to be infamous. Add on the fact that he could be alive still, laughing from an old folks home at all the people trying to figure out who he is. Richard Ramirez. No rhyme or reason, only opportunity. It didn't matter your age or gender, no consistency with weapons, he would kill you with a gun or a hammer. And he looks terrifying. Luis Garavito. Ard, tortured, brutally murdered hundreds of children. His wiki is one of the most effed up ones I've seen. He will be released soon due to a new law that unfortunately didn't include him. He wants to work with disadvantaged children when he gets out. 
Leonardo Cianciulli, aka the soap maker of Coriego. She was a fortune teller in Italy and was good at playing her cards right with people who came to her for guidance about career, love, whatever it was. Killed three women between the years of 1939 and 1940 made soap out of their remains, even placed them into tea cakes, and fed them to her neighbors and friends. For the last woman she killed, she placed her into tea cakes and said that hers were sweeter than the others that she made. Like, what? This one chilled me. Spesavechi family. In my opinion, most frightening serial killers in post-Soviet Russia. That family consists of mother and her son, and her son had mental problems and documentaries were in a s asylum, but somehow he got back to the home, and here he started his murders. So his mother was inviting kids to help her bring her bag to the home, and when his kids came to that hell flat, no one has come back. Also, they could invite kids by two or three, even happened four kids. After the son killed some of them, Mother started to butcher dead bodies to make soup as food for the rest of the kids. Totally confirmed, almost 40 kids were killed, but police found more than 70 sets of child clothing. That nightmare has happened because of wrong paperwork, because as I said, documentary, the son was in an asylum. And because of that, police have spent much more time to catch them. I don't think you can ever pick one most frightening serial killer, but one case I'll never be able to forget is from my Australian home city. I vividly remember when the story broke, the Snowden murders. Basically, a group of guys murdered people for little to no motivation because they were gay or obese or a drug dealer or other flimsy reasons. Their victims were tortured and several of the bodies put into the barrels of acid, which were kept in a disused bank. There was also cannibalism. The thing that's always baffled me is that it wasn't just one person. Three men were convicted for murder. How does that even happen? How do they find each other? If one of my mates turned to me and said, hey, you know what would be fun? Killing a bunch of people. I would be all like, sure, I'm in. Harold Shipman, because as a doctor, he was killing in plain sight for decades with no suspicion. Although convicted for 15 victims, an inquiry report said it could be as many as 250. The system put in place here in the UK makes it very unlikely it would ever happen again on such a scale, but the thought he got away with it for so long as he was in a trusted profession is chilling. All right, I've heard of this one. Uh, yeah, doctors or nurses that kill patients. I mean, I'm sure it's happened all throughout history. Disturbing, truly. Ivan Milat was known to have tortured and killed at least seven people, possibly many more. He targeted backpackers and hitchhikers who wouldn't be missed and then took them into remote forests to rob them before torturing and killing them. He sometimes severed their spines before death to incapacitate them. Malat's nephew also murdered a friend with an axe in the same forest he frequented.